G'day viewers, here we are at the beach at Penzance, and we're going to be running a steam special from Penzance to St Ives on the Dovetail Games Publisher Weekend. I'm Train Simulator Driver from Down Under. We'll be driving the Jubilee, hauling some Mark 1s with both the red and the blood and custard liveries. Let's get on with it. Let's get the large ejector on so we can release our brakes. I'm going to be driving with rail driver today, which I've uh, very cleverly organised to be not in the right spot. So just bear with me for two seconds. All right then. It works. Now I normally drive HUD free, but I'm not going to today. Let's open up the cylinder cocks all the way forwards. And give it a little bit of stick. Just a little. Away we go as we crawl out of here, whacking light poles as we go, of course, as you do. Now this is a beach-to-beach -beach run today, and we're going to see several different sorts of circumstances throughout our run. That's an exciting view as we watch all the people we leave behind. See you later, people. I'm leaving the hut on today so you can see what I'm doing. Always quite liked the uh, WCL as a route. I think it's... I like the concept of the branch line to branch line running. With the added bonus of having all the mainline trips if you want to do them. Wind our way out through the yard here. Not exactly working hard at the moment on the on the more or less flat. Just wind my reverser back a bit towards mid gear. Should have done that before, really. We're running with the automatic fireman today. Those of you who know me know that I am uh, well into my training to be a fireman on a preserved railway near where I live, in the bottom right-hand corner of Australia. Doing a pretty good speed for our tourist special. Actually don't want to get too fast in this because uh, there's another train coming up the branch from St Ives that we're going to meet at St Earth and if I get there too quickly we'll just be waiting around for ages. So I've built this in the scenario planner and the way I've put it together is with four separate scenarios so that I can do the things that I want to be able to do. Making a pretty good clip out of here on our way out of Penzance. Let's pop our little light on. Hello Invisible Fireman, how are you today? Water looks quite good from this angle. The sun shining on it. Let's get this window open. A look at the fireman's view. We should open that window too. It's very clean for a steam engine. Let's whistle for the rail fans up on the bridge there. As we start to turn inland on our trip up the hill to St Earth. Is it St Earth or St Earth? Never really figured that out. Oh, the eager beavers have been here again, chewing all the trees along the route. I 
I guess it's an Earth. Yeah, it's EA. It's an Earth. My apologies if you're a resident of Earth and I'm messing up the name of your town. I always try and keep the regulator open a little bit, even if I don't really need any more speed. Because it, uh, well, it helps try and avoid that. The safety valves blowing off, making all that noise. Let's just open her up a bit more. There are times when I might even resort to putting the brakes on just a little bit. Let's just knock the ejector back. That'll do. Just to make it work a bit harder. They slowly creep back up now because we're heading up the hill. Two miles odd to St. Earth. I was pretty happy when Steam came out for the game. Is it perfect? Nah. Is it great for gameplay? Yep. I quite enjoy it. And I know that uh, DTG are continuing to improve Steam. We've actually had some improvements for when you're steaming slightly, like we are at the moment. And your pressure, you may have noticed, is uh, staying right up there on the line. Kind of wish it would stay just a little below the line and then the safety valves wouldn't blow off, but... Yeah, I can't have everything. Green signal up there on the stick. One point five to St. Earth. Now I'm letting it slow down so we don't get stuck for too long at the red signal up at St. Earth. Because who likes to wait for red signals? So this is part of Dovetail's Publisher Weekend. With the corresponding Steam sale. So if you need a few bits and pieces to complete your collection, now might be one of the times to do it. This route's on sale. It's West Coast local. Doesn't come with the steam train. I've picked that up from Spirit of Steam and put it in here with the scenario planner in off the rails mode using some of the Creators Club functionality. Getting very close to St. Earth now, and because I am expecting a red signal ahead of us, it is time to put the anchors out. gonna make it it's gonna be close might have left that stop just a little late Ooh. sorted all right let's go and have a look at what we're waiting for yep you blow off again back there very good Looks like the uh, poor rail freight loco here is waiting with its sea cows 
to head on down the line because of course passenger traffic takes priority naturally even though it has to wait for it so that's the uh, Magic 37 class here they do have a fantastic sound this is a native to the route Sitting way down there at the other end of the platform, we can just see it coming off the junction to St. Ives, is a class 150. We need to wait for this to clear the platform so that we can get down the branch. It's clearly using the full power of the 150 at this point to make such a magnificent speed. He is going straight through in his way to Penzance. Non-stopping service. Very busy coming back from the beach. Going to the beach. Hmm. I guess I do that now, local trains too. I get on at the beach and I can get off at a different beach. Crossover set for us, and we've got the green down there. Well, that would help if I put the uh, <laughs> reverser forwards a bit. Just a little bit. Now yeah, we don't want to go too hard because uh, we've got to stop here. Due to a uh, permissive signalman, he goes our 37 with its little train. Helps if you close the large injector before you start to brake. We have got a signal through green onto the branch already. Just want to bring our little train in here and get our doors open. Being a scenario, generally speaking, you don't see a lot of people get in and out. Close our doors and get on our way. Time to cruise down onto the branch on our way to St. Ives. The astute among you might notice we've actually got a different locomotive now. It's because to do what I want to be able to do I have to run several different scenarios. Hopefully those passengers will stay away from me so we don't get pushed around. Looks uncomfortable, mate, standing there in that suitcase. I've also gotten rid of the HUD because this scenario actually wants us to go just down to Carpus Bay and we're going all the way down to St. Ives. And the reason I've done this is because the other scenario that I built, which goes from Penzance to St. Ives, once we get down to St. Ives, it would just stop. And what I want to be able to do is once we get down to St. Ives, I want to set back. So I've put this one together. And I've stopped displaying the HUD now because 
it annoyingly will just say that we want to stop at Carpus Bay, which of course we don't really. Admire the view as we go along. So while there are some limitations with the things you can do with Scenario Planner on any of the routes, there's always ways around it as well, where you can do what you want to be able to do operationally, just get a little bit creative about it. So in today's video, there's actually four scenarios that I'm using. We're currently driving the second one. around the peninsula and we are arriving at our second beach of the day and we're going to go through Carpus Bay straight on down to St Ives. Now this scenario is programmed to go from Leland Saltings where we just were down to Carpus Bay so if I stop there the scenario would end but if I just keep going then I can stop down at St Ives do whatever I want to do and then we can um, set back as a real train would actually have to do operationally. It would be fairly likely that a real train would actually have um, another locomotive on the back, possibly a diesel. But we don't have that functionality available us to us for our modelling. We're climbing up a 1.7% gradient here. working pretty hard. Crested the gradient now, so I've just cut off. And we'll actually apply a light braking application. Pop in and have a look at that. Yep, that should do nicely. Maybe just a little bit more. Let know the good people of Carpus Bay know that we won't be stopping for them today, even though there's a stopping marker there that says we should. It's quite a pretty area, Carpus Bay. It'd be an interesting place to live, I think. Good people know we're here, of course. And then we'll round the next point into St. Ives.
Hang around out the back since the safety valve's blowing off. That's doing a spot of fishing down there. I do like the way the waves uh, move around on the rocks. Wrong way. Not too sure how close I can get to the rocks. There we go. Actually, looks quite cool. Better get back in the train, though, because we're not far from St. Ives, and I really don't want to crash into the wall at the end. We'll just stop here at the end of the platform. Quickly whip down here because what would a steam train day be without photo opportunities? Have to do it, don't you? As the brakes release, it'll start moving again. Just makes for a much more interesting arrival, really. And there we have it. Arrived into St. Ives. Get our doors open. Let's see all of our copious passengers getting on and off up there. Now, of course, it's time to set back. So let's go and get a different position for this. Here. This should look fairly good. Actually, it just occurred to me, did I shut the doors? I'm not sure. No. That would have been just slightly funny. All right, let's go back up here. Do you know you can actually get down to the beach? I'll show you that after we get the uh, train out of here. Not everybody knows about it. See if we can manage this without a wheel spin. There's that wheel spin. I always think the birds here look kind of like pterodactyls.
What's that I hear you say? Wheel spin. That'll just get messy after a while. Don't think we'll keep doing that. We're setting our train back into St. Ives now. And look at that, we've got another locomotive. Still driving one of the uh, Jubilees from Spirit of Steam. So this is the third scenario I've put together for this. I'll put a little bit of brakes on. Because it is downhill here. There we go, that should do. About there, that seems about right, that'll do. And for this scenario it actually wants me to go to St Earth, which of course is the other way. But I want to be able to send it down this to St Ives and leave again. So we are. Just got to watch the speed as we set down the hill. How are you doing, Invisible Fireman? Keeping it nice and stoked for us? I hope so. Oh, there you go. Visible fireman. You know, that's something that's always amused me. The way the flowers grow when you drive past them. Do you know if they fixed it? I reckon I'd miss it. Bring her in nice and slow into the station. You know, it runs through your mind at this point. Is there actually enough room for this whole train in the platform? Just saying. I think there is. There we go. That's a right spot for the tourists to come and take all of their photos. Nicely done. And we do all fit in the platform. Magnificent. 
All right, I'm going to change to the next scenario now so that we can uh, finish this trip. It's time to head back to Penzance now. Get the doors closed, guards whistled. Brakes off, and away we go. I'll go with the hut again this time because we are doing what we're told this time. There we go. Now we've been given clearance to run through at DMU speeds today. How's the fireman? Yep, invisible. Good to see. Climb up out of Zenodes on our way to Carver's Bay. Well, this time we actually will stop. Giving her a little more power to cope with the grade. Guess we were starting to slow down then. As the rear of train crests behind us, we can pull the power back a bit. And if we're lucky, we'll keep enough steam up that we uh, won't anger the pressure gauge gods and blowing off the safety valve. We can see it's quite fast recovery at the moment, though, after our little run up the hill there. Certainly have been some improvements to the steam generation at lower speeds, which is good to see. Be interesting to see what the steam firing's like when we actually do eventually get a true manual mode for this. And someone who fires real locomotives. I'm not quite sure that I'd actually want that level of complexity in the game, to be honest, because it is actually quite a hard job. It requires some significant skills. Not an easy job by any means. Just cut off for our approach into Carbis Bay and doing a little bit of braking. Don't want too much though. I've got the large ejector closed because it means the brakes release really slowly. That's a rickety bit of track, isn't it? Uh, 
seems to be about the right spot. Doors open for our imaginary passengers on our imaginary rail tour. Get them closed again. Now we haven't been stopped very long, so there's not really any reason to open the cylinder cocks. They certainly would, have cool would not have cooled down after that run. Let's get the large ejector open. So our brakes come off fairly quickly. Might have helped if I'd given it just a little more cut off. A nice view as we climb out of Carbis Bay. Using plenty of steam now as we climb the quite difficult gradient to Leland Saltings. the train crests the gradient will cut off otherwise we're going to start rocketing along like light speed which we don't really want probably want to put it on light brake I would think Now with the large ejector closed, our brakes will come off very, very slowly. Which helps you main control and maintain control rather on this sort of descent. The cool thing about a vacuum brake is as soon as you've made the vacuum, you can destroy it and put the brakes on. locomotive you can have the steam brake as well so if you want more steam brake you can have it what you can't have is less though so there's no way to to bail off this locomotive which would be a good practice because you get a smoother run if only the carriages are braking and you've got the weight of the locomotive keeping your whole set stretched out If your locomotive brakes a little harder than the carriages, and they often will because they're not maintained together as a set generally, then uh, the carriages will have run-in, which is they'll go bonk, 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 all the way down the train as the locomotive slows down at a higher rate than the carriages do. A little while to go to Leland Sidings as we smack our face into yet another bridge.
wondered if there, there should be a river all the way through this. Because the landscape seems to suggest river. But it stops there. I have never actually gotten so excited about it that I've gone and had a bit of a look on uh, maps or some other imaging product to, to find out. Should we let the town know something unusual is coming through? Of course we should. It's not quite the uh, vibrancy of a big five chime, but it's still cool. Well, that's a good view. I, for one, certainly look forward to the day we get more steam trains in the game. did have a long run down there, so I've opened up the cylinder box. Not bothering to give her more cutoff though, because she's got plenty of speed. We're not stopping at this one. No train for you. Hi. Bye. Hi. Bye bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Yes, cross your arms. No train for you. Sorry. Never mind. What would they do with the train anyway? They'd just ride it. They'd probably even want to go where we're going. Why would they want to do that? Almost at Leland Saltings now. Now, what do you drive with? The stopping markers turned on or stopping markers turned off? I have to admit, generally speaking, I have them turned off. They're on today. I normally don't use the uh, HUD very much. After I get to know the route, I don't even use the top part of the HUD. I just rely on being able to sight the signals and knowing where I'm stopping. When I'm learning a route or I haven't been on it for a while, like this one, I tend to actually have that part of the HUD turned on so I know where to stop and where to run to and what the timetable looks like and all those exciting things. I don't think how often you end up in a tree, isn't it? Alright, let's get our doors closed on our way to St Earth. Steam, give her a bit of a steam clean, huh? Don't look at the driver like that. You had your chance to get on. You didn't do it. Not his fault. Now, we don't have terribly far to go to St. Earth. We've got a bit of a gradient to climb, but we don't want to build up a massive amount of speed either. What the shadows on the train? Pip, 
people often ask me what I prefer over um, Train Simulator Classic or Train Sim World. And I have to say the um, greenery that you get with Train Sim World is quite superior generally to Train Sim Classic. Not just in the appearance, but the amount of movement you get. I like the visual stuff that you see along the route. I think that's fairly important. Just going to close the rig and let gravity help us out because we're not terribly far off the uh, obligatory five mile an hour through a distant dirt. And because we've got the HUD on, I can tell the signal's green, but if you were driving a real train, you'd uh, be wanting to be well under control before you saw that signal, because there's not a lot of sighting distance on it. Now this is actually a little bit of a difficult juggle with a steam engine, trying to uh, maintain such a slow speed while climbing up such a, a uh, heavy gradient. If the chuffing didn't tell them, we'll let them know we're coming. Now what I would have loved to have been able to put into Scenario Planner here would have been a runaround. That would have been really nice. And I hold hopes out for one day that we'll actually be able to do that. Where else would you watch a steam train depart from? the green signal to go. We're going to do a nice quick run down into Penzance now. Just going to keep the speed down while we go through the crossover here. Got plenty of steam engine, steam power on. There goes the signal changing after we've gone through. Rear of the train's almost through. Let's just check the water situation. Looks good.
water reappears smartly in the grass and the two gauges agree so let's give it a little bit more cut off and let's get out of here Ooh, a bit of wheel slip don't want that maybe we do it's pretty exciting Get to shoveling, bud. We need it. Invisible fireman. Alright, we're going quick enough now. Let's put the regulator on the roof. All the way up. Now you can kind of see why steam engines went away, apart from the fact that they have to be serviced every single trip. And checked out and tested and oiled and everything else. It's a huge undertaking to keep one of these beasts running. They're just not that quick. And a modern railway needs quick. You can't afford to lose so much speed, or so much of your timetable, on the exit from a station. Now, I said we were doing a nice quick run down to, to uh, Penzance, didn't I? This bit I lied. Soon, though. Soon. Grade's starting to come down now. And then we can resume some spirited running down the hill. Spirited running is what train crews refer to when they're being naughty. We're unlikely to be naughty because the speed limit's 70 mile an hour and this train, well, it's not really going to go that quick. But it'll still be fun. On the down gradient now and starting to accelerate. Keep the regulator on the roof for now, but I'll bring the cutoff back a bit. Good view. I do believe we're being steamed. Ease back a little now. This one's only good to about 60 mile an hour, so I don't want to push her too hard.
And sadly, we have to cut off now because we're coming into a 50 zone, so I need to bring us down for that. Get a slight upgrade in as we come into the beach now. Going to bring it down for the 15 mile an hour entry into Penzance now. Slowly drift our way in. Looks like there's a drag race ready to happen there. like the freight run out this time getting out ahead of the 150 If the 150 will get out. Serves him right for taking so long before. Oh, well, we should stop our train or we're going to run into the end. And that, as they say, is that. So, West Coast Local available in the publisher sale right now. Um, I'm Train Simulator Driver from Down Under, if you couldn't figure that out for yourself from the uh, funny voice. I stream Australian Eastern Daylight Time on Sunday mornings at 8.30am, which is in the evening for the uh, UK and the US folk. On Saturday, in fact. Yes, that's right. I live in your future. Anybody who'd like the lotto numbers, just give me a DM. Alrighty. Have fun, folks. I've got a couple of other videos in the publisher special. A uh, particularly fun one is a back cab challenge without looking, driving along in the 323. That was quite exciting. Mm. A lot of uh, puckery moments, shall we say. Anyway, signing off. See you later.